Let's go ahead and get your Bibles out. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll just go ahead and get your Bibles out. <laughs> we'll kind of land and uh, lighten up the place a little bit here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Like, uh, someone want to turn on the lights? <laughs> Let there be light. <coughs> hint, hint, hint. <laughs> Hallelujah. There we go. All righty. There we go. That's better. Well, we're glad, we're glad you're here. You know, um, with this is Communion Night Healing Rally. We're going to pray for anybody, anybody that needs prayer for, sick, for, for the sick. Uh, we invite you to, on the first, normally on the first Sunday. Uh, of course, last Sunday was New Year's Day, so we didn't do it. But on the first Sunday of the month, we have a, a healing rally. Um, and so, you know, invite sick people, find folks, folks that are sick. Um, you know, then, then of course, next Sunday is going to be the second Sunday again also, because next Sunday we're having, month we're having first on fifth, or fifth on first, or actually fifth on fifth, the fifth Sunday on the fifth of, Jan of February. And, um, but in discussing the subject of healing, uh, oftentimes we do, we do belabor the point of, that it's God's will to heal because we deal with so much unbelief in that area. You know, so much teaching against, almost really against, that God heals. You know, there's a lot of people who don't believe that uh, healing belongs to us today. And, uh, you know, Acts 10.38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with them. But then if you go to, uh, to um, Hebrews chapter 13, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, glory to God. It says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and, 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 and forever. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, you see it in your Bible? Now, that's not Pastor Ed's Bible, that's your Bible. It's not the wall Bible, that's your Bible. Anybody have a hard time this morning having to readjust to using a real Bible instead of using the wall? Good. It's a good adjustment. Hallelujah. God anointed Jesus to go about healing the sick. Doing good and healing the sick. Amen? And uh, then, then Hebrews says, it says that Jesus is the same. Well, why is that? Because God's the same. God doesn't change. He told the children of Israel, I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee, or the Lord thy physician. Yeah. Amen. Yet, and I was saying, we spent a lot of time discussing, you know, um, that it is God's will to heal. And we've taught that numerous times. We have, you know, uh, a, a single CD that we have here. And you can get it, I guess you can get it off the internet, but it may be good to put it out there in, in one of those uh, easier to find places. Uh, healing for all. Healing belongs to all. God wants people well. Jesus bore our sickness and carried our diseases. Amen. Carried it to the cross so we wouldn't have to bear them. Amen. Amen. But in, in doing so, sometimes I think we may overlook um, the aspect of how to receive it. <laughs> you know, proving the point that he does want to. That's that when, listen, faith begins where the will of God's known. But you know, uh, if you have faith to be healed, we need to get you over to where you're um, acting on it. Isn't that right? Yeah. I said, isn't that right? We need to get you where you're acting on your faith. And, and not just um, kind of sitting around wishing you could have it. Look over into the book of Acts. Um, now I'm trying to find this real quick. Acts chapter 14. And I have a bunch of scriptures up here, but I don't have any kind of a set pattern because I didn't really which know, know which way I was going. So we'll just kind of go with the, the flow of the Holy Ghost. Uh, Acts chapter 14, we quoted this this morning, but let's, let's, um, we'll just start in verse 1, we'll read on down to about verse 11 or so. And it came to pass at Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake, that a great multitude of Jews and also the Greeks believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil, affected against the brethren. I'm going to tell you something, you, there's nothing worse than a ticked off religious person. <laughs> Now, they can just be dog ugly about things. 
You get Christians mad at you about something, and boy, you want to see venom. They'll come at you with everything they got. Amen. I mean, that old Pharisee devil will get off all over them. And they'll spew out all over you. But the unbelieving Jews, well, no, that kind of tells us what kind of Jews they were, didn't it? Unbelieving. Amen. Stirred up the Gentiles. They always want to get somebody in on their, their stuff. Verse 3. Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. And when there was an assault made of uh, both the Gentiles and also the Jews with their rulers to use them disrespect, uh, despitefully and to stone them, they were aware of it and fled unto Lystra and the Derby, cities of uh, uh, Lycaonia. Lycaonia. And just about get you filled with the Holy Ghost. Right, trying to read that one. Unto the region that lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel. There they preached the gospel. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. Now let's, let's understand this. He's never walked. He's grown up impotent in his feet. Can't walk. The, te the same heard Paul speak. Well, what was Paul saying? Verse 7 says he preached the gospel. Yeah. I said verse 7 says he preached the gospel. Amen. Who steadfast, that's Paul, beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Now, where did he get faith to be healed? Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. I said Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And this guy heard Paul speak. And, you know, in verse 7 says, they heard in the, there they preached the gospel. And there was a man impotent from his, uh, in his feet from his mother's womb who had never walked. The same heard Paul speak. Well, what did Paul speak? God pre Paul preached the gospel. And Paul, perceiving he had faith to be healed. Where did he get the faith from? From hearing Paul speak and what Paul spoke was the gospel. So that has to mean that when he preached the gospel, there was faith to be healed in it. Yeah. Yeah. That if you preach the gospel, there's got to be faith to be healed in it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And he's, now wait a second now, he has faith to what? To be healed. But guess what? He's not healed. All we need is faith. No, we've got to act on our faith. We've got to move from the place of having the faith to receive or believe or do something to doing it. That faith, in, 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 in that faith moving us into action. See, Paul looked down here. This guy's got the faith to be healed. You can't say he doesn't. The Bible says he does. And if they had walked away from there, a lot of Christians who would have been there, and, and that guy was down there, they said, well, he just didn't have enough faith to be healed. Yet the Bible says Paul perceived he had faith to be healed. Amen. I said amen. <coughs> so what's the problem? He hasn't moved from having the faith to be healed to acting on that faith and receiving his healing. Doing something that's an act of uh, that's in, in line with what he believes. Now, if you'll go back and listen to Dad Hagen talk about when he was on the bed of affliction, and the Bible says he's on, you know, he says he's on the bed of affliction about 17 months, became po totally paralyzed, and um, from about the neck down. And, and while he was on that bed of affliction, when he, he finally got to the place he, he had faith to be healed, the Lord said, "Yeah, you do believe, all right. Now get up." People should be, you know, well, people should be out of bed at, at noon. Now, wait a second now. He has, he's gotten to the point he has faith to be healed. But he's not healed. He had to act on his faith. <clears throat> of course, now your mind wants to go nuts. Well, I can't walk. I haven't walked. Well, I'm not healed. No, see, faith, faith makes reference to those things that do not exist. Now, this is, I'm, I'm quoting the Weymouth translation of, of Romans 4, 16, I believe it is. Paul, now, the King James says that God makes reference to those things that do not exist as though they did. The Weymouth translation says he makes reference or he makes, um, God called those things to be not as though they were. Weymouth says he makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. See, that's faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Oh, glory. Now, here, here's, here's something you've got to understand. You're going to have to believe it before you see it. 
you're going to have to believe you got it before you get it. That doesn't make sense. I'll believe it when I see it. It don't take any believing to believe it. It doesn't take any faith at all whatsoever in the world to believe there's a chair there. Your, your faith is not your evidence. As a matter of fact, if I, I can say that chair's not there all I want to, and I'm going to walk right into it and trip over it. Faith does not believe what it sees. In other words, <clears throat> it takes no faith to believe what you can see. If you, walk, if you, if you call me up and say, Pastor, I deposited $100,000 in your bank account, electronically transferred. I, I found your, your, your bank numbers and I transferred it over there. And, and, I, and I'm kind of going, oh my God, I got to check that out. And I go look in there. It takes no faith to believe when I see the numbers there in the account. When I go to the bank and say, hey, uh, I want to withdraw $100,000. Well, there's 100000 Somebody deposited $100,000 in your account last night. That takes no faith. Faith, faith is, the, is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So we're going to have to learn to get people into faith. We're going to have to school people into faith. How do you school them into faith? Give them the word. People are schooled into faith by giving them what the word says. Not conjuncture. Not theory. Not what you think about it. Not what grandma said. Now, I had a little Pentecostal grandmama. Love my Pentecostal grandmama. Thank God, I, you know, that I, I got around the Pentecostal enough to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. You know I mean? You hang around the ditch bank long enough, just slide in. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Thank God, you know, for my Pentecostal grandma. But, you know, my Pentecostal grandmama, they, 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 she just believed, she believed a lot of stuff that wasn't accurate. Just because she'd been told that. You know, it was tradition. You know, I knew half the people in that church that were sick either had Paul's thorn, or suffering like Job, or were like the man born blind. They all had a reason why they couldn't get healed. One woman I knew had were all three of them. Job's wife. Remember her, Janie? <laughs> she knows what I'm talking about. Not Joe Hammond's wife. Another Joe's wife. The wife that he had wasn't the woman. Anyway, we'll just leave that one alone. <laughs> And man, man was, a, was one of them runaround deacons. Anyway, I'm done going to meddling right here in that, in, on, on the past. Hallelujah. You know, but I mean, they always had an excuse for not being healed. Church, I'm going to tell you, if you want to receive from God, you're going to have to school yourself into faith. You're going to have to get into the Word. Now, understand what I'm talking about here. Faith comes by hearing. You're going to have to go to Bible school. Now, I'm not talking about packing up and heading out to Raymond, Oklahoma. If you're not called, don't go. You know, well, I want to help them out. We'll just send them some money. Praise the Lord. Now, you're going to have to get into the Scriptures and let the Word of God produce faith in you. Yeah. Amen. Actually, the first thing it's going to have to do is produce hope in you so that He can get substance to something you're hoping for. That's right. See, a lot of times if you'll hear a sermon or you'll, you'll see a scripture, hope will arise. Oh, there's, 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 there's a way I can get healed. There's a way I can receive from God. But then once that hope's there, you've got you to get yourself over to faith so you can give substance to that hope. Hope won't produce. Hope will inspire you, but it won't get you, it won't get you across the line. Yeah. It won't get you across the finish line. And so, um, we've, got, we've got to get back to where we, we get into the Word, school ourselves, faith arise, and then learn how to release our faith and act on our faith. So we can get the results. And when it comes to healing, you know, now there are different ways you can be healed. We understand uh, the one way that most people want it is through the gifts of the Spirit. They want somebody to show up with a healing anointing. They just want to go up and hope that today's their day. And they get something from God. Well, you know what? I mean, you know, the, the, here's, the, here's the deal with that. The gifts of the Spirit are divided every man to every man as severally as the Spirit wills. And if you go over to 1 Corinthians, okay. amen, it's chapters 12 and 13 and 14, but you know, particularly chapter 12. The gifts of the Spirit are divided severally to every man as he wills. You can't count on him willing that he's going to manifest that today. There's no promise. You, can, you can't use your faith to have the gifts of the Spirit manifest to get you what you want through the gifts of the Spirit instead of using your faith. There's no basis for it. He had no scripture to sustain it. He divides it as he wills. It's just like people who try, oh, we're going to use our faith, we're going to believe Jesus. We're going to call, we're going to bring Jesus back by our faith. You can't do it. There's no basis for faith. 
And there's no, there's no scripture that gives you the authority to do that. There's no scripture that gives you the authority to, to believe that the gifts of the Spirit will be manifest to get the job done for you. Are you here? So what do we do? Well, thank God for the manifestation of the gifts. I mean, the healing anointing, thank God for it. Thank God when it's manifest. Thank God for people who have a ministry along those lines that when that's manifest, you know, miracles are wrought for people. But you know what? Um, <clears throat> even those people need to be schooled to keep what they get. That's right. We had a lady visit our church a number of years ago on a, during the week. We were in the office, and uh, this lady came, and our friend, they call, actually the friend called and said, Can we come by? We'll see, you got a guy's bookstore? Yeah, we got a bookstore. We, we need to get some. You got Brother Hagin's books? Yeah, we got Brother Hagin's books. We need to come out and get some materials. Uh, I've got a friend I want to bring over uh, and get some stuff in her hands. She, you know, she's, she's deaf. Well, they came over, and um, you know, came in. And, and the lady could, you ever been around people who've been deaf? but can speak a little bit, real, real thick tongue, but they've learned to be able to speak somewhat, um, you know, by, by training and, and, and really, really a lot of effort to do that. Um, <clears throat> and she began to talk to us. Uh, the, 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 one of our staff members that was with us that, here that day. And, and she said, she said oh, well, I went over to such and such, I was in a meeting a few years ago, and they laid hands on me and I was instantly healed. Heard perfectly for the first time in my life. And for about five days, she had complete and total healing. Woke up on the fifth, on the sixth or seventh day, and it was gone. What's, what, what happened? See, there was no faith involved. There was, a, there was a manifestation of gifts. But I'm going to tell you, if you're going to keep stuff from heaven, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to get, get in there and get your, get your faith on it. Yeah. Now, what probably happened is the devil came back and said, I'm going to rob that from you, and she let him do it. Mm -hmm. It's not that God took it from her. Right. The, devil's always looking, the devil's always looking for a way back in. And you're going to have, you're going to, have to get um, further back from the camera. <laughs> so Brother Bill's not leaning back like this. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to have to get, you know, get to where we, we, uh, we stay in faith about things. Now, Dad Hagen talked about, uh, back when he, used to, he, he had that healing ministry, you know, he, he had that all his life, but back when he was just out on the field as, one of, as what was known as one of the healing ministries, you know, he and about 60 other ministers were in Gordon Lindsay's The Voice of Healing magazine, and they advertised their meetings in there. Now, Brother Roberts was not in that because he had his own magazine from Oral Roberts Ministries, uh, but the, all the other major healing ministries all advertised in Gordon Lindsay's The Voice of Healing. And... Um, he said he found out he was going to the meetings and people, people come up were getting healed and they were miracle signs, wonders, I mean absolute manifestations. Going back to the same doctors and declaring that this is a miracle. This is, I mean, they were, this, they're, they're, this is a complete miracle. Come back a year later and 80% of them had lost their healing. And that's when the Lord began to talk to him about teaching. And so he started holding faith seminars in the morning and praying for the sick and, and, and then praying for the sick at night and come out to the same places and a year later 80% had kept their healing. Wow, they, they learned how to use their faith. They got, they, they got it by a manifestation of the miracle, of the healing anointing, but then they were able to keep it. They learned how to keep it. They learned how to keep it. Well, how'd they keep it? They kept it through faith. Kept it, you know, amen? They kept it through faith. So, um, when, when we're helping people, we want to get them to where they can, they can get into faith, receive by faith. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you come uh, somewhere and hoping you're going to get something, oh, I, did, you know, I just came out to see if, if maybe tonight was the night I could get something from the Lord. You're probably not. Why? There's no faith there. Well, Pastor Ed, don't be, I'm not trying to be mean, I'm trying to help you. You've got to understand, we can't, we can't live in hope and never move into faith and expect God to do things. You're going to have to get out of the realm of hope and get into the realm of faith and believe and act on what you believe. Amen. Now, like I said, um, the majority of people in the body of Christ, and especially un untaught and unlearned, um, want the healing minister or the healing or you know, somebody to get it for them. Hoping they're going to get something. And, and, and they're, they're coming. I heard one preacher one time on television, local minister said one time, well, come on down here today to see if the Lord is, you know, this might just be your day. Well, your day for what? Whatever you need from the Lord. Well, you know, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. 
Now salvation is soterios in the Greek. It's in the sozo word group. Sozo is the Greek word for saved. And it covers just more than going to heaven. It covers being saved, being, uh, being healed, being delivered. Amen. Yeah. It, it's, it's all inclusive. Amen. And so the noun soterios, salvation, is based on the sozo, on the verb. In the Greek it's different. It's backwards from English. English you base the verbs on the nouns. And in Greek you base the nouns on the verbs. And so it's considered what we call the sozo word group. Today is a day of soterius, of healing, salvation, deliverance. Amen? If you harden not your heart. How do we harden our heart? The Bible talks about hardening your heart through an evil heart of unbelief. Whatsoever is not a faith is sin. So what do we do? Well, we, we, we as believers... Have a, have a, you know, we have a responsibility in some areas, but I'll tell you, if you want something from God, you're going to have to follow the God plan. Now, we get over into the fifth chapter of um, the gospel of Luke or Mark. Let me see here where we are. <coughs> now, don't, I'm not going to leave that. I'm gonna, we're going to get back to the guy who's, who's impotent in his feet. We're going to get them raised up before we leave tonight. Isn't that good to know? Amen. At least Mark chapter 5. Yeah. Mark chapter 5. Now, um, Jesus is, is um, on his way to Jairus' daughter. Jairus' house to raise up his daughter. And verse 25 says, and we're actually, I'm sorry, let's read verse 24. And Jesus went with him. Much people followed him and thronged him. Now, if you want to know what a throng is, just drive up to New York City at 5 o'clock in the afternoon when everybody gets off work, get out and walk on the streets. That's a throng. All right? They just, if, you don't, if you don't just force your way somewhere, they'll, just t they'll determine where you go. The flow of the crowd will determine where you go. Okay? So the people thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, had suffered many things of many physicians, spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. She, just, she was just a local community physician guinea pig. Well, we're going to get you to try this. We're going to get you to try that. We're going to get you to try this. And nothing was working. As a matter of fact, she spent everything she had trying to get some cure. Are you here? Looking for Lorenzo's oil. Looking for the, you know, the fountain of Ponce de Leon, whatever. And um, the Bible says she was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, well, what is she? If you go ahead and study, your, you study your, your, your Gospels, you'll find out that there's record in other places prior to this where people were healed by touching his clothes. Word gets out. And so she said... When she heard of Jesus, when she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said, now the Greek says she said and kept on saying, amen, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. She's laying in that bed. She's nothing better, but rather grew worse. But she, here comes hope. She heard of Jesus. She heard of Jesus. Hope arose. But then she began to speak. If I can touch his clothes, I shall be whole. If I can touch his clothes, I shall be whole. If I can touch his clothes, I shall be whole. If I can touch his clothes, I shall be whole. What happens? Now she's beginning to speak about what she's heard. And what's happened? Faith is arising in her heart. Amen. I said faith is arising in her heart. Praise God. Glory to God. She said, kept on saying... So she started releasing her faith by what she said. But then she acted. Listen, I'm going to tell you, saying's not just enough. You're going to have to act on it too. I believe I prosper. I believe I prosper. I believe I prosper. Honey, you're going to have to tithe and give. You can't, you can't circumvent tithing and giving. I'll, get, I'll, go, I'll get you New Testament scripture. If you don't believe tithing's in the New Testament, just cut Hebrews out of your Bible. Hello. Jesus taught tithing. Hebrews teaches tithing. Amen. Corinthians teaches giving. Are you here? You're going home. Hallelujah. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body she was healed of that place. When did she feel? After she had already heard, gotten the hope, then started confessing, gotten the faith, then acted on her faith, went out and touched him. 
she didn't, she didn't have a manifestation in her body until she had gotten through hope, faith, and acting on her faith. Yeah. Amen. She said, if I can touch him, I'll be healed. If I can touch with his clothes, I shall be whole. She got it. Now understand what's happening with Jesus. Anybody know? He's in a what? He's in a throng. Now this woman is considered unclean. By Jewish law, her going in the public, in, into, the, into the public, she is considered to have a communicable disease. And so the one way they took care of that was they stoned them. You, you, didn't, you didn't let us know you were uh, unclean? You're dead. We just stoned you. Take that. And they were very good stoners. Hello. These people knew how to stone. All right? And uh, so she comes out of her house, and instead of walking down the street crying out, unclean, 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 so people can be away from her and not, and not be uh, susceptible to be uh, uh, get, catching whatever she's got, she's walking down the street going, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch with his clothes, I'll be whole. If I can touch with his clothes, I'll be whole. She gets, there's a throng there. He's out there somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Now, don't you think that the Lord should have arranged it so he was sitting on a rock by himself like the woman at the well? I mean, you would think it just should have been that way, don't you? Faith, who said faith was going to be easy? Paul wrote to Timothy and said, fight the good fight of faith. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Stop walking around looking for some Mickey Mouse walk in the park where everything's just going to be hunky-dory and you got Tiny Tim singing to Miss... What was her name? Vicky. Miss Vicky tiptoe through the tulips. <laughs> going to go through life, as Brother, Brother Hagin used to say, going through life on flower beds of ease. No, fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Amen. Are you here or are you going home? Amen. Fight the good fight of faith. That means that when you start acting on your faith, you might run into an obstacle. Well, I thought it was going to be easy. Because he would entered into faith, has entered into rest. Entered into rest from your abilities and your labors. It's still a fight. I said, it's still a fight. She said, but if I can touch for his clothes, I shall be whole. Well, that's a good thing she said that. Because she gets there, and there's a multitude throng him. Now, I can imagine that. See, I'm going to tell you something. Once people get into faith, and they've got it, and they know they got it, they're like sick them to a bulldog. You're not keeping me from my healing. She just got and crawled in. Amen? I said, she just got in there and crawled in. Hallelujah. God, I mean, it's probably the only way to, uh, listen, I'm going to tell you something. About the only way to get through a throng is to crawl in. There's more room down there. Now, people might be going, what, 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 what? She didn't care. Amen? And so it says, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be whole. Straightway the fountain of her youth was dried up, I mean, her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body, she was healed as a plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself, that dunamis, virtue, dunamis, miracle power, had gone out of him, turned about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? He didn't say who touched me. He said who touched my clothes. He recognized that now the disciples, the spiritual group, you can't go always go by the opinion of those that surround you. Especially this bunch. Are you here? And the disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee? And sayest thou who touched me? Now, you've got to denote the sarcasm here. King James doesn't really bring it out real good. But it's like, they've got to be going to each other. Did he not get enough sleep last night? I mean, master. Look, can't you see everybody, everybody's touching you? Can't you just, and you want to know who touched you? Everybody! They're probably sitting there thinking, well, we got to get him some rest. We got to stop those overnight sessions with the father up on the mountain. He needs, he needs a couple nights of sleep. Listen, these, these guys are natural. 
I mean, right up to the very end, Peter's out there cussing, cussing Peter. They're not real spiritual dudes. They become spiritual dudes. But in the process of getting there, they were really unspiritual. I, I just wish I could have seen this. I can imagine him just like... He just kept looking around. Amen? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. It's like water off a duck's back. He didn't even flinch at the bozo statement of the disciples. Because he's walking in a different place. See, he felt virtue. He, he, he felt the, the, the power, the healing anointing, the dunamis of God go out of him. And knew that nobody actually physically touched him. They just touched his clothes. He, he even recognized that. That's how in tune he was with, with the anointing. Disciples are all caught up with having people trying to get to him and stuff. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter! Now here's what the church says. I came to prove to you that I'm the Son of God, and you're healed because of that. Your healing is proof that I'm God's Son. Is that what he said? That's what people teach. Jesus healed to prove he was the Son of God. He didn't give credit to that. He said, daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be healed of thy plague. Amen. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Glory to God. What healed her? Now on one side you come, well, the, the virtue, the dunamis power of God went out of him into her. And that made her whole. Yeah, what got it to come out of him? Her faith. Remember when we were teaching on grace, and actually when we were teaching on the book of Ephesians also earlier, uh, late last year, that uh, as we are teaching along those lines, we kept saying there's a God side and a man side. See, the dunamis was God's side. The power to get the job done was God's side. That which received it and got it to move from God's side to man's side was faith. It took her faith. Well, how did she release her faith? Now, remember the Bible says she heard of Jesus. We got to tell people God wants them well. Yes. They've got to have hope. <clears throat> Cast not away your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Yes. Too many Christians cast away their confidence. Lose hope. I said to lose hope. Can't afford to lose hope. No, 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 no. You got it, you got it, you know. And people, and people go to doctors and say, you got six months to live. There's no hope. There's nothing we can do. Well, that's, that's natural hope. That's man hope. You know, we're hoping the doctor's got a medicine. <coughs> we're hoping the doctor's got a surgery. They got a pill. They can radiate me, put chemicals in me, do something to get rid of it. But I'm telling you, you I'll tell you, you need, you need Bible hope. You need to know that Jesus is the healer. Amen? Jesus is your answer. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then you need to get into faith by the Word of God that He'll do exactly what He said He would do. Amen? That what he promised, he's able also to perform. Remember the Bible says of Abraham in Romans, the fourth chapter, I believe it is, that Abraham was fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Amen. Isn't that right? Fully persuaded. Hallelujah. That what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Glory to God. Now, when God promised Abraham and told him at 90 and 9 years old, now he promised him at 75, but he got back at 90 and 9, he says, this time next year. Now let me say something here. There was no virgin birth. Abraham and Sarah had to go practice <laughs> on the promise. <laughs> Hello? Are y'all here? You're going home. 99 and 90. They went in the tent. Shundai. 
And then y'all, y'all look at me like, oh my God, he's talking like that in church. What do you think happened? <laughs> There was a promise from God that she's going to bear a child at 90 years old and you're going to father it at 99. They didn't sit around and go, we're in faith. (laughs) No, faith moved them into the tent. Hello? You, you got to think. You know, I mean, somewhere around 85 or so, he probably had to look at it and say, well, you ain't having no youngin'. Amen. As a matter of fact, we know it when he was 87, which made her 77, she offered her handmaiden because it won't work. And he said, no, baby, I just can't do that to you. Uh-huh. That's not what he said. He said, where's the tent? <laughs> and we have Ishmael for the proof of it. Amen. No. They, Abraham, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. God took a, a, a dead wound from a decrepit man and an over-the-hill woman. I call her prune womb Sarah. Her womb had to be dried up. The Bible says it ceased to be with her after the man. That's King James. Ceased to be with her after the manner of women. She'd gone through menopause. Hello? And she got pregnant. That's an anomaly. No, that's a miracle. I said, that's a miracle. See, faith brought that to pass. I said, faith brought that to pass. Because they acted on the promise. They were fully persuaded that what he promised he was able to perform. You've got to get the full persuasion. And and listen, I'm going to tell you something. There's no way around it. You're going to have to start saying. You're going to have to speak. Look over Mark 11. Now, I'm not trying to copy anybody, but you know, I mean, it's Bible's Bible. Amen. Now, we know the story leading up to here. Uh, Jesus was hungry, went by, saw a fig tree with, with, uh, with leaves on it, went by happily if he might find some figs. Why? Because the time of the figs wasn't yet, but when a fig tree has leaves, it's supposed to have figs. That's just the nature of the tree. He gets there. There's no figs there. So he said, no man eat fruit of the hereafter forever. And the disciples heard it. Now I grew up Pentecostal. We, we, we flapped. We mean flapped. We'd say, how many spoken requests do we have today? And so, brother pastor, I believe, we, we, sister so-and-so is at the home. Can we pray for you? We'll remember her in prayer. We'll, now, now what, what did we mean by remembering them in prayer? Hello? We said some stuff that just didn't make any sense when you analyze it. But then we all, I always finish up with this one. How many unspoken requests do we have? And you know, and, and, and you know how women would sit with the legs crossed and the arms crossed like this? And they'd always go like this. <laughs> I call it the flapper. You ever heard the term oxymoron? Meaning you got two opposites put together, unspoken request. Try that at McDonald's tonight when you go home. I have an unspoken order. <laughs> Drive up to the window, they, they say, can I have your order please? I have an unspoken order. <laughs> and then pull around and see what you get. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Y'all here, you're going home, you won't get a thing. You can't have an unspoken request. No, Jesus said, no man need fruit to be hereafter forever, and the disciples heard it. Your authority works by speaking, not by thinking. God didn't think the worlds into existence. He spoke the worlds into existence by the word of his power. Amen. Isn't that right? And the disciples heard it. And so they go on. He runs all the guys out of the temple. We know all that stuff, you know. Verse 20, in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Now, and put it in that modern vernacular, it's dead in the doornail. Now, I don't know whoever discovered that doornails were dead. But, I mean, it must be really dead. I heard that expression since a little kid. Have you ever heard that expression, dead in the doornail? I don't know what that means. But it must be really dead. All right, I don't know where it came from. 
but it's dead. And Peter, listen, now Jesus didn't go by and say, guys, look at this, man, I am, I am powerful. That tree's dead. I just spoke to it. Look at that. He's walking on by. Peter said, Master, the fig tree you cursed is withered. He stops. And in church world mindset, he stops and goes, I am the Son of God. And trees obey me. If I tell them to die, they die. If I tell them to fill up a boat, they fill, fish to fill up a boat, they fill, a ship, they fill up a boat. I am the great. I am. Pow! Angel music. Woo! See, we've listened to Hollywood and we've gotten traditions. And Jesus said, when, they, when Peter said that, he said, have faith in God. Now, one translation, and, and, and actually my, the margin of my Bible says, uh, or have the, the faith of God. Have the faith of God. Another translation says, have the God kind of faith. For verily I say, now verily is, is a King James for swearing or an oath. Okay. For verily I say unto you, we're Mark eleven twenty two now, three, that whosoever, see, you don't have to be Copeland or Creflo or some big name minister to get stuff to work for you. Amen. Whosoever. How many people in here would qualify as a whosoever? Amen. Now, just in case you're wondering, that's everybody. You don't have to, it's not a trick question. If you're breathing, you're a whosoever. Okay? That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he thinketh. Really? Oh yeah, sorry. So you have to speak it. Jesus didn't walk up to now, now, how many of you have seen that movie? I think it's called Jesus of Nazareth. It was like a, um, I'm not sure if it was an NBC production, but used around Easter, one of the major networks will carry the, 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 the movie Jesus of Nazareth. You know, and when he goes to heal somebody, it's just a shadow of his hand, harp music, and angels are singing in the background, and it's all, and he never says anything. Totally unscriptural. I said totally unscriptural. Amen. Man came to him with a withered hand. He said, stretch forth your hand. Amen. Daughter, be loosed of thy plague. Go to the woman who came on the Sabbath day, bowed over. Be loosed of thy infirmity. Amen. Jesus spoke. See, it takes speaking. I'm going to tell you, you need to start speaking. Speaking. He'll have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things shall ye desire when you pray? Now the word pray here is the Greek word ateo. Now I may or may not be pronouncing that quite correctly, but it's A-I-T-E-O. A-I-T-E-O. You'll find that exact same Greek word over in James the fourth chapter. You have not because you ask not, or you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your own list. I believe that's James chapter four. Is that right, uh, concordance? Brother Bill? <laughs> Brother Bill is my concordance. Yeah, verse 3. You have not because you ask not, and you, uh, because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. Lust. Now the word ask there in James 4, 3 is ateo, A-I-T-E-O. Same Greek word found here in Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Whatsoever things ye desire when you pray, ateo. So what, is it, what does it tell me? The word ateo means to speak or to ask, to pray. What's that mean? It's verbal. Yeah. What things shall you desire when you ask? So we get real weird about prayer. I mean, you're not in some Catholic monastery somewhere. You're not a monk with a, with a vow of silence. Hello? You've got to communicate with God. You've got to communicate your faith. Somebody say amen. amen. When you pray, believe that ye receive it. Now, listen, the, the word them in the... In, is not in the Greek, it's italicized, meaning it wasn't in the Greek. So what things shall you desire when you pray, believe that you receive, and ye shall have. Believe that you receive, and ye shall have. That, what? What things shall you desire? Now understand, I don't want to go into a great big long um, 
lesson on illicit desire. James 4, 3 is enough. You have not because you ask not or you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your own lust. What do you mean? You ask for somebody else's wife, you ain't going to get them. Yeah. That's not biblical. Faith begins with the will of God. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Jesus is talking about faith. It's got to line up with the Bible. Her, your, your friend's wife is not lining up with the Bible. Right. All right? Just saying. As a matter of fact, it might line up with a uh, Smith & Wesson. Hello. <coughs> Praise God. No, Jesus makes it clear that faith works by believing and saying. Well, doesn't Paul do the same thing in Romans, the 10th chapter? Turn over there, Romans chapter 10. Now, having you guys use your, you know, not use the wall is making me slow down some. Because I got to give you time to get over there. Hallelujah. I was just, I was just listening to a, 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 a teaching today by Brother Hagin. And in one series I listened to him recently, he's talking about, you know, the need, need to see it in your own Bible. Got into a different series. He said, I had a guy come for, 20, for 30 days and, and, and never brought his Bible. And the day he brought his Bible, he received from heaven what he was asking, what he needed. <laughs> I said, well, I guess that God's just trying to make sure we, we understand how important your Bible is. Romans 10, 8 says, well, what saith that the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart? That is the word of faith which we preach. Paul didn't just preach the gospel of grace. He preached the word of faith. Amen. Some people say, you know, I did a thing recently. You know, uh, the, the, the term, the word of grace, the gospel of grace is only used one time. There's, there's like 14 other different descriptions of the God. I'm, listen, I'm not against grace. But you can't say it's only the gospel of grace. Paul said it's also the word of faith. It's the gospel of Christ. It's the gospel of God. It's the gospel of your salvation. Amen. Yeah. God, you can't limit God to some pet thing you like. He's bigger than your pet thing. Yeah. Now listen, that is the word of faith which we preach. That it, now listen, didn't Jesus just teach over Mark 11 <coughs> that faith was released by believing and saying? Verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, or one translation says Jesus is Lord, and shalt believe in thine heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now again, Soterius, that's not just limited to being born again. That, that covers the all-inclusive plan of redemption. Includes healing. You believe in your heart and you say with your mouth. I said you believe in your heart and you say with your mouth. My, 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 my. Time got away from us here, didn't it? Glory to, glory to God. I'm just getting warmed up. You guys are pulling on me like you're, you are sponges and I'm a water faucet. I could, just, I could sit right here all night and just keep going. Like the Energizer Bunny. Boom, 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 boom. Hallelujah. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. For having a desire. Amen. Yeah. No. He said, if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, you'll be, be saved. Mark 11. That if shall, you know, what things shall you desire when you pray or when you ask, believe that you receive them and ye shall have. Ye shall have. Ye shall have. What? You're going to have to believe you got it before you shall have it. We got people trying to shall have it before they believe they got it. And as the old saying is, that's the cart before the horse. That's not a real good way to run things. Hello? That went over big. We don't want the cart before the horse. Are you here? Is that right? Praise God. Praise God. So... As we started out, what, how, we need people to be able to release their faith. How do you release your faith? Well, let me give you one story. Hallelujah. And uh, then, then we're going to receive communion and pray for the sick. We'll pray for the sick and then receive communion. Well, there's nobody sick here tonight. We're just going to keep having services until sick people start showing up. We start praying for them. Yeah. Hallelujah. A number of years ago, Buddy Harrison, which was uh, Brother Hagin's son-in-law. Buddy's gone home to be with the Lord now. Uh, Pat Harrison, Dad Hagen's daughter, 
Pastor Hagen's sister. Uh, her and Buddy were married. They started an organization called Faith Christian Fellowship. Now, Brother Buddy used to work for Dad Hagen, started the Word of Faith, started camp meeting, um, you know, did a lot of things for the ministry, and then, and then uh, Buddy went out on his own and started the organization called Faith Christian Fellowship International and uh, became a pastor to pastors. And uh, tr just a tremendous blessing to the body of Christ. And uh, Sister Pat, I mean, FCF still runs. Sister Pat's still running it. Hallelujah. We thank God for their, their gift. And what they give. I'll tell you, they flowed in the Holy Ghost. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, mm. Now, uh, I, I have one of the Raymond Singers and Band from the, the time that we, we, we think it's probably the best Raymond Singers and Band group. They said, you know, say, you know how we learn how to flow in the Holy Ghost? Brother Buddy came over and spent some time with us and taught us how to flow in the Spirit. Because they had been around Brother Sister Goodwin. And they, they float. They said, if you want to know what Brother Sister Goodwin would like, watch Buddy and Pat. That's, how they, that's exactly how they ministered. And I'll tell you what, just, just a flow of the Spirit. First time I saw that as a Pentecostal boy, I went, whoo. Now, I've been, I've been in a lot of Pentecostal meetings. I ain't never seen anything like that. And I was like, I was just stirred up. Praise God. Amen. I love my Pentecostal roots, but I love what God's added on to it since then. Praise God. Amen. Anyway, but, Brother Buddy had that Faith Christian Fellowship up on the north side of Tulsa there. They had bought a, um, like a Kmart shopping center. And uh, the, uh, the Firestone Tire Store out front, they had turned into their offices. They had bought that too. And then they, they um, had gone into that, that Kmart shopping center and turned that into a church. I was there for their very first service ever. Yes. And it was, camp meet, it, was the, it was the Sunday night of Camp Meeting 1980. That was Camp Meeting started on Monday. And that was the Sunday night before. And the air conditioning wasn't working. It was 115 degrees. Sat 5,000 people. Norval Hayes was preaching. Norval's not short-winded. Amen. So anyway, Buddy had that church there. He was on the radio. And, and uh, this woman was home. She was about, just about like this woman with the issue of blood. Just about bed fast. And you know, she could get up a little bit and get around a little bit. And she got, Hope got stirred up. And she started hearing Buddy teaching on healing. And Hope got stirred up. And she kept listening to him. And all of a sudden she started saying, if I can get to that church, I'll get healed. If I can get to that church, and he'll actually say on this. She said, if I can get to that church and get that man to lay hands on me, I'll get healed. And she started, and, and then, and then she moved from that. And she says, I'm getting up this Sunday. They start on Monday. I'm getting up this Sunday, and I'm getting dressed, and I'm getting in my car, and I'm going to that church, and I'm going to go up there, and he's going to lay hands on me, and I'm going to get healed. Said it all week. Said it all week. Well, she drove up in the parking lot, got out of her car, started walking to the door. In the meantime, there was a greeter inside the door. You know what greeters are? People who greet people when they walk in. And, and, uh, and the Spirit of God spoke to her and said, I want you to grab the hands of the next person through the door and dance with them. Man, that woman was just had her faith out there to get in there and get in that line and get healed. She, the next person through the door, what was that woman? This woman's about decrepit. She's, I mean, she's it's taking all of her faith just to get out of bed and get there to get healed. She opened the door and that greeter grabbed her and started dancing around with her. And she got healed. Amen. 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 Went in the service, just sat there and enjoyed the service. Didn't you have to get in the prayer line? Hallelujah. But see, she put, started putting her faith out there. And you get your faith out there, God will meet you. Yes. Yep. Yes. You put your faith out there, God will meet you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God, I'm telling you. You get people speaking the word. Hallelujah. Well, I don't, right now, I don't believe it yet. Y'all just keep speaking it. Keep speaking it. Uh, think about this now. Somebody come walk in and, and have you ever had, anybody, ever had anybody rain on your parade? Y'all know what I'm talking about when I say that statement, rain on your parade? I mean, they're like pig pen in the blanket. You know? They're just a walking dust cloud of darkness and depression. I mean, they walk outside in the middle of a bright sunny day in the summer it was high noon and they'll bring clouds in suck all the light out of the atmosphere ever been around people like that now if other people and, and you, they get to talk and they'll rob you of your joy they'll make you depressed just about it now how much more if you're speaking depression or, or unbelief who do you believe more than yourself I said who do you believe more than yourself you can set the atmosphere of faith or unbelief. Amen? I said you can set the atmosphere in your life by the things you say. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's why you need to feed on the Word. 
Speak the word. Act on the word. Hallelujah. Set the atmosphere for miracles. Set the atmosphere to receive. Set the atmosphere by the things you say. Glory to God. I said glory to God. You're the atmosphere setter. Oh my, my, my. There's a, there's a, there's a prophecy by Sister Wilkerson. Years and years ago, she prophesied about atmosphere. She said, atmosphere calleth. Atmosphere calleth me, says the Lord. Ooh, glory to God. And then she goes, that's, yeah, if you want, you say, that sounds like Billy Bram. That's because Billy Bram used to sit at her feet. She got all that from Sister Wilkerson. She spent, spent so much time with her, she acts like Sister Wilkerson. And the glory. Okay, that's, that's Sister Wilkerson. <laughs> That's where Billy Brim was hanging around her and got off on her. Praise God. But I'm telling you, you set the atmosphere for miracles. We set the atmosphere for church growth. We set the atmosphere for reaching the lost. We set the atmosphere for going on with God. By what we say. By what we say. Ain't nothing going on over there. Stop saying that. That's it. You keep saying that's what you get. Nothing going on. Right. Hello. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We set the atmosphere. Healing belongs to the church. Amen. People, the people can receive from heaven. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hey, can you say amen? Right now, if there's anybody here tonight you need ministry for healing in your body by laying on of hands, listen, come in faith. If you're coming, come in faith. Pastor has going to lay hands on me and I'll receive my healing. Why? Because the Bible says I'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. I believe when hands are laid on me, I'll be healed. You, gotta, you even got to be in faith on those lines. Get in faith about that. Anybody here tonight you need ministry by laying on of hands? Come on.